So welcome again. I'm going to read now a bedtime story because we want you to fall asleep. It's time to go to bed. And today from this book that we love called 50 Magical Stories, we are going to read one that says it's a story called The Unicorn from Tales of Wonder Every Child Should Know by Kate Douglas and Nora Archibald. So let's start. Fritz, Franz, and Hans were charcoal burners who lived with their mother in the depths of the forest. Once upon a time, they had been well off, but their father had died and all their money had been used up. Now the house was a poor hut and they scarcely had enough food for barely one meal a day. Fritz and Franz were, unfortunately, selfish and pleasant lads, but Hans always had a cheerful smile or word and it all his power to help his mother to keep him in good spirits. One day, at dinner time, they were startled by a knock at the door. Fritz growled out in his usual surly tone, Come in! The door opened and a huntsman came in, who had been shooting game in the forest. Good morning! Good morning, friends, he said in a cheerful tone. Could you provide me with a cup of water and a mouthful of something to eat? I have forgotten to bring anything with me, and I'm ravenously hungry and far from home. Fritz and Franz threw a scowling glance from under their eyebrows and continued munching at their hunks of bread. Hans, however, was more polite. He invited the visitor to sit down, then filled the cup from a spring of delicious, cool water, which rose near the hut. He handed his own course, crash to the stranger, saying he was sorry that there was nothing better to offer him. Thank you, said the stranger, courteously. He made short work of them, rolling the crumbs, which fell from the crust into a hard pellet. Then he rose to go. Well, I thank you heartily for your hospitality, said the huntsman. Now I'll give you a word of advice. One of you lads should go and seek the sparkling golden water, which turns everything it touches into gold. Fritz and Franz pricked up their ears at this, and both at once demanded where this sparkling golden water was to be found. The stranger replied, the sparkling golden water is to be found in the forest of the dead trees and the farther side of those blue mountains in the far distance. Then, bowing to his hosts, he stepped toward the door. Hans opened it for him and, obeying a sign from the stranger, followed him a little way from the hut. Then, the stranger, taking from his pocket the little black bread pellet, said, Keep this pellet carefully, and when you seek the sparkling golden water, as I know you will, don't forget to bring it with you. So saying, the stranger waved his hand to Hans, and plunging into the thicket, disappeared. Hans slipped the pellet into his pocket, and re-entered the hut, where he found his brothers in loud dispute about the sparkling golden water, for he wanted to make a fortune for themselves. At last, it was decided. After a great deal of squabbling, the Fritz, as the elder, should go in search first, and according next day he set out. As he had no money, he was forced to beg at the doors of the cottages and farmhouses which he passed, for food and shelter for the night. Eventually, he found himself approaching a vast forest of enormous trees, which lifted leafless, sapless branches to the sky and every breath of wind rattled them together like the bones of a skeleton. Suddenly there was a terrible roaring sound and out of the forest rushed a huge unicorn with a spiral golden horn on his forehead. What seek you here? asked the unicorn in a voice of thunder. Fritz stammered out he sought the sparkling golden water. The unicorn stamped furiously on the ground with his right forefoot. 
Say this instant, he cried. What is that you want with the sparkling golden water? I want to get money to buy land and become a count, Fritz was just able to gasp out. The unicorn said nothing. He simply lowered his head and with his golden horn tossed Fritz 345 feet in the air. Up went Fritz like a sky rocket and down he came through the branches of one of the trees until he reached the point where they joined the trunk. The tree was hollow here and Fritz, and Fritz tumbled down to the bottom of the trunk and found himself a prisoner. While he was filling his arms and legs to find out if he wanna, while he was filling his arms and legs to find out if any bones were broken or not, he had the satisfaction of hearing the unicorn as he trotted back into the forest, muttering, "So much for you and your countship." Franz, Hans, and their mother waited and waited for Fritz to come back. Six weeks passed and two months, and three months, and no Fritz. Then, Franz's patience came to an end. I won't wait here starving any longer, she said, said he. Fritz has forgotten all about us. I'll get the sparkling golden water and become... Fritz has forgotten all about us. I'll get the sparkling golden water and become Bargomaster. So he said, following the same road as Fritz. Eventually, Franz, very hungry and sulky, reached the verge of the forest of the dead trees. Out came the unicorn and asked his business. Franz replied that he wanted the sparkling golden water to buy the house and post a burgomaster. The unicorn tossed him into the air and he tumbled into the same tree as Fritz. Then the unicorn trotted back into the forest, muttering, for Franz's benefit. So much for you and your burgomastership. The months passed by, but no news came to Hans and his mother of Fritz and Franz. Eventually, there was nothing for it but to leave his mother in the care of a kindly neighbor and go and see if he could find out and see if he could find out what had become of them. By making, en by making inquiries, Hans easily found the road which they had taken. At last, he, at last he too found himself on the verge of the forest of the dead trees and face to face with the golden horned unicorn. But in reply to the usual question, given in the usual tone of thunder, Hans replied coolly, I seek my brothers, Fritz and Franz. They are where you will never find them, said the unicorn. So go home again. If I cannot find my brothers, said Hans firmly, I will not go home without the sparkling golden water. What do you want with the sparkling golden water, which is in my charge, asked the unicorn in his terrible voice. I want to buy food and wine and comforts for my mother, who is very ill, answered Hans undaunted, but his eyes filled with tears as he, thought, as he thought of his mother. The unicorn spoke The unicorn spoke more gently. Have you? he asked. The crystal ball? Because without it I cannot allow you to pass to the sparkling golden water. The crystal ball? echoed Hans. I never heard of the such thing. That's a pity, said the unicorn gravely. I'm afraid you will have to go home without the water. But stay, fill in your pockets. You may have had the ball and put it somewhere and have forgotten it. No, Hans said to the unicorn. I have nothing in my pocket except this pellet. And he was about to throw it away when the unicorn called out on him to stop. Why? The unicorn went on. This is the crystal ball. Look. Hans did look. And sure enough, he found in his hand a tiny globe of crystal. Your possession of the crystal ball makes me your servant, declared the unicorn. It is my duty to carry you to the fountain of sparkling golden water if you wish to go. So Hans, cla so Hans clambered onto the unicorn's back and grasped his mane. Then the unicorn gave a bound that carried him over the tops of the highest trees. Three such bounds did he take, 
And then he paused and said to Hans, Now you may open your eyes. Hans found himself in a desolate rocky valley in the middle of which there sprang, there sprang up a fountain of water, which sparked with such intense brilliance that Hans was unable to first took that Hans was unable at first to look upon it. There, master, said the unicorn, turning his head. This is the fountain of sparkling golden water. Dismount and fill your flask. But take care that you do not allow your hand to touch the water. If it does, it will be turned into gold, and it will never became, and will never become flesh and blood again. Hans slid quickly from his seat and, flask in hand, approached the fountain. He tried to be as careful as he possibly could by, as possibly, as he possibly could be when filling the flask, but despite his greatest care. The top joint of his little finger briefly touched the golden water and in an instant became gold. However, he had his flask full of sparkling golden water. The flask itself was now, of course, golden and he felt that the top joint of his little finger was really a small price to pay for all of this. Where now, master, said the unicorn when, Hang, when Hans got back. Take me to my brothers, Hans asked, and the unicorn sprang away. In the blink of an eye, they were back in the dead forest. The unicorn led Hans to the tree in which his brothers were imprisoned, where they had been surviving on beetles, worms, and rainwater. Which one of the two powerful blows with, with one or two powerful blows with his horn, the unicorn made a hole large enough for the unhappy prisoners to creep out. Two more sheepies. Two more sheepish, miserable wretches than those half strafe brothers of his. Hans had never seen. They fell at his feet and thanked him again and again for delivering them. And they promised never to do anything unkind or selfish again. So, so did the brothers keep their promise? And did the sparkling golden water Hans and his mother wealth? And did the sparkling golden water make Hans and his mother wealthy again? Well, that's another story. So thank you very much for listening and uh, we'll see you very soon in another story when we read it aloud next week or in a couple of weeks. Thank you.